Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here with one of our uh, guest hosts, uh, Juby, who comes to us with a background in tech. And uh, how are you doing today, Juby? Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. I'm curious and interested to get into the conversation. So if you don't mind introducing yourself, giving folks a little bit of background of what you're doing now, and then we'll go back in time and, and get to you as, as a kid. So what are you up to these days? Well, now I'm a, the managing partner of an ed tech company called Yellowtail Tech, mm -hmm. uh, where we train people with no IT background to move them from absolutely no IT background into a high paying career in the industry. So that's our niche. That's uh, the target market we focus on. Great. And uh, obviously you're doing well for yourself right now, but I'd love to rewind and go back in time and talk a little bit about what was Juby like as a kid? What were you like growing up, maybe early fondhood, fond uh, memories? Uh, so what were you like growing up as a kid? Um, growing up as a kid, well, I grew up almost like an only child because all my siblings were very uh, um, much older than me. So I had okay. a lot of time to myself. Um, and I, 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 I love to read and I love to build. I remember mm. always building things. And my dad is a builder, a furniture builder. And um, I was convinced from an early, very early age that I would be an architect or something mm. around building structures and stuff in general. So these are the, the memories of, of me um, building um, maquettes, building, um, uh, little toys with wood. So me, um, if I were to go back and remember, my, my best memories were around how I used to play with my hand and build stuff. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And, and how about you kind of going through the, the, the system, like school, were you, were you uh, a studious person, good marks and things like that? No. Uh, did, did brothers and sisters have any influence on you or is it mostly your dad? Um, Mostly brothers and sisters had influence on me, but um, I was not a great student in school. In fact, I always tell people um, I was convinced I was not smart. Actually, I was convinced mm. I was stupid. With the, mm. That's what I was using to refer to myself in my head until I got to high school. Um, okay. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but um, my marks in school were, weren't great until high school and then everything changed um, when probably when I realized why I'm there for what education could um, help me leverage um, something changed um, something mm. changed in the first year of high school so uh, yeah in uh, middle school and uh, elementary I was not a great student sounds good and in, in the high school process, like, were you still uh, having that identity as a builder? Like, was it yes. uh, as you were growing up and you continued on that and you were still building things? Or, like, walk us through, yeah. like, the transition from, like, uh, self-labeled uh, stupid Juby to uh, uh, yeah. now self-labeled, like, smart Juby. Like, how does that transition yeah. happen? Or tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, the, the high school I moved, uh, uh, I, I, I transferred in really helped me uh, find myself, find my voice. And most importantly, uh, one particular um, teacher um, mm -hmm. had a class, it was a builder, it's a building class where you build okay. um, things, you learn how to build things, how to measure things, how to build a little more uh, um, with structure. I don't recall the name of the, the class, but that's when I was like, yes, yeah, this is it. This is what I want to do. And I remember vividly the project where they gave me a two-dimensional uh, two uh, plan to build a house in three dimensions. And I had the best mark for the project. I, was, so I still have uh, the Mac at, uh, still at my mom's house. Um, and that's the day I was convinced I'm going to be an architect and I'm going to focus mm -hmm. on uh, building um, maquettes. I'm not sure if it's the real, uh, the actual word in, in, in English. Basically, I think it's models. models. Like a little model. Models, yeah. yes. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's that's what I was convinced I was gonna do. And and these were made out of like like paper foam or what what were they made out of? Uh, in my case, they call it uh, it's hard paper called Bristol. Uh, it's it's okay. it's for building, but mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's a it, it's a uh, um, specialized material for for sure. building uh, um, uh, models. Yeah, sounds good. And if you don't mind sharing a little bit about um, so it, it was it what was the process like? So is it just that oh. Uh, now I'm smart because I got a high mark, or was it I'm smart because I, I enjoyed myself? Or uh, I'd love if you share a little bit, or if you recall a little bit of that journey. Actually, I don't know. Uh, I think it was more of a slow uh, transition into finding and to realizing I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not that stupid kid. Um, <laughs> so. I, I couldn't point to something in particular that 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 made that happen, but okay. um, yeah, things changed in, in in high school and to to my mom's uh, um, surprise as well. She was amazed on how my my grades were improving. Yeah. Yeah, and that's amazing. With with a little bit of belief in yourself, then uh, things can definitely change. So uh, I encourage a lot of folks to kind of find what it is that they're interested and passionate about and, and go for it. But uh, obviously you are not an architect now. <laughs> so so walk us through a little bit about that journey. So in, in high school, you kind of found this new interest, high marks in the stuff. You, you, you're now a uh, smart juvie. Uh, and then how does one go from, from wanting to be an architect to now getting into to IT? Yeah, yeah. So um, my last year of high school, I applied to uh, several schools, including uh, the University of Montreal, um, their architect, uh, architect, architecture pro program, and I didn't get accepted. I got accepted to their urbanism mm -hmm. uh, program, and I was not interested in that. And I got accepted to the University of Maryland. So instead mm -hmm. of going to Canada, I ended up going to my um, sister's alma mater, because this mm -hmm. is where she, she, she did her um, undergrad and master's. So I was actually very happy to follow the footsteps of my sister. So I ended up in Maryland instead um, and didn't have uh, an architecture program. Um, and the school I was accepted at the level, uh, uh, at the, at the um, uh, um, bachelor's level. So the next thing I knew about myself is that I want to own my own business. I want to run my own thing. I was, two things were very true. I'm a builder and I'm an entrepreneur. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that was for sure what was going to happen. So I went to, um, to business management, like most people mm -hmm. do, uh, who think they want to become entrepreneurs. And uh, the first summer, uh, when I got um, to college, I went to New York to visit some friends, and then he was asking me what I'm majoring in, and I told him. He's like, well, there's this new hybrid program where you combine business management and information systems management. It's a little more pointed, and it makes your skill a little more relevant. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. I, I, I didn't know about that. Um, w once I got back home, I looked into it and University of Maryland had that hybrid called MIS, Management Information mm -hmm. Systems. So that's how I tracked my business management, which was a little bit, very, not a little bit, pretty broad, into Management Information Systems. So that's how I got into IT. But I got into IT to be a manager, to be um, sure. uh, to build systems, to look over uh, system in a more uh, holistic way. I I never got into IT to be the tech guy, you know, running commands behind the keyboard. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's what I did. And I after school, I um, I got some jobs where I. I did exactly that. Got a bit of struggle with that, but um, what I realized is, on top of all these great uh, degrees, you need something very specific to sell to the market, and I didn't have that. So the job I was getting, 
they sounded well, but they were not paying, they were not high paying. And I stumbled on Linux, a Linux training where I learned Linux. Now, when I went somewhere, I could say, I have a management information system background, but I know specifically this and I can help you build your system, manage your system on Linux. So um, that's what changed. And I remember I told uh, uh, um, Jonas Okwara, who was my first mentor, he was the one who trained me on Linux. I will take this training and I will make something big out of it. And I told him, <laughs> thank you. And, um, you know, went along with my life, um, continued working in, in the corporate world. And then at one point I said, okay, I'm ready. Let's um, do something in, the, in, this, in this field, which combined my interest to build things, build businesses, my interest in IT and my background in IT. And most importantly, that niche I know was not very well known to people and that was very lucrative. So that's what I did. So my yeah. wife and I, um, when she decided to transition into IT, I helped her transition. She was uh, basically customer number one. And I'm like, yeah, I found the model. Of course, it took, it, it took two years to refine the model. So we started in 2014. We incorporated properly in 2016. And when we look back, all the students for those two years, we were, you know, figuring things out and teach, uh, training people. We look back and we realize that we always had um, better um, results with people with no IT background. So that's why yeah. we said, okay, not only we're going to focus on Linux, but we're going to focus on training people with no IT background. That's awesome. So, yeah, thanks for sharing the journey. I'd love if we kind of uh, dig into a, a little bit of those pieces because uh, there's a lot of different decision points along the way. So I'd love if you share a little bit about that that process where, okay, you applied and you want to be an architect, right? And you didn't get in. <laughs> if you yeah. can share a little bit about that journey because that must have been a, a bit of a blow, right? A, a bit of a heartache to say like, hey, previously you were interested in that. You had aspiration to that. like. If you can recall a little bit about that thought process along uh, the way to, to, to go from like, uh, I've just been s s punched in the face <laughs> saying you're not allowed in into this program. And then the analysis to, to kind of get to, okay, my, your strengths and stuff like that. I know you went yeah. a little bit into it, but I'd love if you deep uh, dive a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I was uh, really disappointed. And I was also applying mm -hmm. to other um, uh, universities. But the thing is, I didn't have a portfolio. I didn't have a serious portfolio of work and um, that was playing against me so everyone I talked to were like uh, it, it's gonna be difficult so um, that's when I was actually convinced uh, going that direction was not gonna happen I was mm. quickly to tell you the truth quickly over the fact that I am not gonna get into um, architecture school but I looked, I looked at it again after my, um, after my bachelor's because uh, I don't know if you know in the U.S. Uh, you get into architecture school at, at the master's level. Very mm -hmm. few schools start you in architecture from the bachelor's level. So mm -hmm. after my, my, my uh, bachelor's, uh, um, I looked at some programs where they help you, they have a, a small um, summer program where they help you build your portfolio and they let you apply to the, to, the, to the program. And it's around the same time I was interested in building my business. So I was like, mm. do I go back to that old, you know, juvie who wanted to be an architect or do I pursue <laughs> business? And of course, business one. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how it went. Nice. And, and I love if you are, don't mind digging into, so, so your friend suggested, hey, there's this new hybrid system that kind of merges the two. But, but I didn't hear a lot of like tech background or, or interest and stuff like that. So if your friend just says, hey, there's this new tech thing, let's yeah. jump into it. So yeah. how, how did that decision process? Because I, I got the entrepreneurial part, your dad was there, mm -hmm. but how did the tech part go? Uh, and, the, and how was that decision process there? The, the tech part was simple. I felt going into business management uh, was very generic. 
because mm -hmm. uh, it's a very it's a very broad degree and i just love the idea of adding a layer to to that training i'm getting from 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 college and tech was available and the idea sounded great everything was moving to be to become more uh, uh um technology driven so i it, this was a very um how could i say um in uh um intellectual decision mm. it wasn't because i had the itch for technology right. in general i just wanted to be more relevant to the market and i i understood adding something a little more specific to my portfolio would help so okay. that's that's really how what it was what it was great so so now you're in this program this uh business uh tech program and uh you you graduated right can you walk us through a little bit about like what that process was like was it, you s said you struggled a little bit in getting jobs mm -hmm. but w was it easy like how did you end up uh actually landing something uh shortly after graduation yeah, I, I actually got, I get lended something, but it was very generic. It was very low level. It was very low pain. And I'm like, okay, let me see what's going on here. Um, after all this time in school, I'm, I'm not loving what I'm doing. I'm not making any major decision. I'm not, I'm not going at the speed I would love to. I think I need something even uh, more pointed, more uh, uh, relevant, um, because me, I, I always believe the deeper you go, and I tell my students mm -hmm. that, go deep, don't go wide. So mm -hmm. I was trying to find ways to go deeper, and that's when I, uh, I found uh, a Linux. Um, mm -hmm. That's when I decided, okay, I'm going to go through that program, get deeper, have multiple layers understand business, understand management information system as a whole, meaning business uh, um, integration of, of, of IT system within a business organization and specifically uh, knowing uh, Linux. When you stack these things, um, your odds of getting more, um, more important jobs, higher paying jobs, shoots up. And indeed, it did. So that's that was the the thought process, really. Sounds good. So, so you, your recommendation is to go uh, deep because it's counter to some of the other ones where you want to be like uh, jack of all trades exactly. and stuff like that, where you kind of be good in that. But uh, I would echo the sentiment that oftentimes when you go deep. Uh, you have that skill set very uh, niche, uh, very valuable to certain set of people, smaller group of people, obviously. But then the good thing and the interesting thing is once you go deep, you can go wide afterwards because you can Absolutely. apply the same things into whole, so many different things. Whereas if you're always wide, then you're just kind of superficial and shallow exactly. and, 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 and easily you replaceable, do, that sort of thing. Exactly. Like I tell my guys, I train snipers. I don't train infantry guys. <laughs> you, right. you call a sniper for a very specific mission and he's very highly regarded and well in the military i can't say highly paid but very highly regarded and it's a it's it's a it's a special guy you call on for a special mission you see so that's that's to me that's that's uh my motto go deep do not go wide focus on a one uh, um a track and IT because you can get yourself lost. This is also not by accident. We only offer two programs mm -hmm. and one kind of build on each other. So because we believe we want to be subject matter expert, it's better to be subject matter expert at one thing. It's better to build Yellowtail Tech to be the, the place to come and learn a Linux right. and cloud computing, which we are um, by far the place that focuses on people with no IT background that trains Linux. We are uh, yeah. um, one of the few people in, uh, in the US that have that combination of, of offering. So that's amazing. That's, yeah, that's and I kind of like it to... to go that direction. Yeah, I, I kind of liken it to, to Amazon, right? If you actually think of them at the beginning, they were books, 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 books. Now they can do anything else. Now, yeah. whether you'll do that and conquer the world for that, but they, they got really good at, at books. You're really good at, at, at Linux and cloud computing. That doesn't mean the other ones will be off limits. 
because you're still building the the the, uh, the build this business but I, I would imagine now that you have that kind of formula that the process set up uh, th then it could be expanded and extended um, I'd love if you chat a little bit about uh, the no IT background and you actually mentioned that looking back at the data you found that uh, the no, no IT people um, did a little bit better I don't know if you've done any kind of analysis or thought or have any thoughts in terms of why that I have might my be, thoughts on uh, it uh, sure. but anecdotal um, Sure. Because of my, uh, you know, relatively small sample, uh, yeah. but it's because IT people um, they question everything when it comes to <laughs> learning new stuff. Meaning, if I come here and I say to someone with no IT background, do this, they're just gonna do it. They come mm -hmm. as a as a blank canvas. But if you tell mm -hmm. a guy with some IT background, some schooling, they went to school for 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 IT. And then you tell them to do this, they're like, well, there is another way to do it. Well, why we even have to do this, but we could this, this, this way. Me, I kind of know it, so I'm not going to drill into it. So you get a bunch of pushback that you don't get with someone with no IT background. To me, mm. that's generally the reason. So um, that's why we just focused on people who actually um, take on the, the, what we're offering a little bit easier, you know? And also, what it also creates in terms of opportunity is that we spend all day now building programs, refining programs specifically intended for people with no IT background. So the way we present it, the pace at which it goes, the support we offer, all that is catered to someone with no IT background. So it works. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I initially had a thought, well, my assumption would have been that the, the folks that don't have a tech background can actually look at kind of bigger picture, more business focus, and then they layer on the tech on top of it, which gives them a, a, like a much more competitive edge over just the pure tech folks that can that only know code, that only know how to configure, that only know this and that, and but they don't understand like the business context. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting to say that it's really more that uh, the, the blank canvas and they're, they're, they're willing to uh, kind of put in the work and effort. Yeah, and, and the blank so canvas and, and the, the idea that they can do it themselves, which yeah. is a fallacy. Oh no, I can just buy a book and learn Linux on myself. By the way, you can. <laughs> but three years later, you talk to that same guy. So, did you learn Linux? Did you get that yeah. uh, 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 um, promotion? Did you pivot? No. So yeah. they can, in theory, do it themselves, yeah. but didn't end up never doing it. So right. yeah, that's the other uh, struggle. That's amazing. And right now you have these this capability for for Linux and, and cloud computing, and and maybe you'll expand that, or maybe just uh, just uh, monopolize the the industry. <laughs> That's probably what areas. the direction we're gonna take. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to, to do that. I'd love if you, uh, and obviously the journey is ongoing and, and we'll look forward to hearing more of your updates uh, along the way, but I'd love if you can go back and, and share some of your swike, the stuff I wish on you earlier. So telling uh, young Juby, I don't know, maybe in in, um, when, in grade school where you're like not smart Juby <laughs> versus high school smart Juby versus like uh, architect bound or whatever, maybe in different points of your life, is there any sort of swike or, or advice that you'd give to your younger self? Yes, uh, I would um, always encourage people to look for mentors um, mm. because you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. And mm. people, I think, discount the fact that finding mentors, it's not only finding people who are completely very uh, successful or, you know, millionaires, you know, this is not your typical mentor someone who's gone through the process, who knows a little bit more than you, um, for you to be able to bounce ideas on. It's very important. Um, to me, that's what I've realized a bit late. Um, and yeah, that's what I wish I knew a little bit earlier. That's amazing. So yeah, I know what I took from that is, uh, I mean, mentors, they don't have to be like the uh, 65 year old billionaire that sort of thing they might just be like a, a senior that's three or four exactly. years ahead of you or someone that's graduated five years ago or something like that they, they don't have to uh, have like the, the the big title or something it's really just someone to, to share their experience been there done that uh, yeah. this is what what I did this is what I learned 
and and yeah. so that you, as you said don't make the mistakes yourself you can yeah. uh, I, I often use the term like upgrade your mistakes <laughs> yeah. you don't make the, the the mistakes they made you make the the the, the higher level ones or, or ones yeah. further along yeah basically the way i see it i'm committed to not to make uh to not make all the mistakes that i could learn from others you know i will make my own mistakes you know i will you know be mentored a mentor to other people but i don't have to do the same mistake as you know everyone else you know that's awesome are there any other words of advice or uh prose wisdom that you'd want to share with folks um well in general it, you know people watching this might be considering it one thing i usually say almost every time is that get into IT for the right reasons, meaning don't make sure you don't get into IT to only make more money or to work from home <laughs> because that's the big attraction. I'm going to make more money and I want, I want to have a commute. Make sure you have some interest. Make sure you allow yourself to actually get into it to the point where you enjoy the work because it is it, um, working, you know, from home, it gets lonely. Because you 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 <laughs> most likely are not gonna be in a in an office environment uh, that much anymore, especially with the trends I see. So get into IT for the right reasons, but um, there's a, a lot of opportunity in the industry. If should you decide to get into the industry, yeah. for sure. I I think about uh, a lot of the folks that are doing like the dev boot camps that got into it because devs were making tons and tons of money before, but now with uh, the, the state of the the tech world, uh, it, it's really hard. So if they got in for the wrong reason and don't have the motivation, it comes becomes really difficult for them to continue on. Um, but I, I'd love if you share uh, maybe some future aspirations. What can folks look forward to uh, hearing from you and and seeing from you in the future? And then maybe where can folks uh, reach out and connect with you? And obviously we'll put all that in the show notes. Um, future aspiration, um, we are um, making more um, deeper partnership with uh, AWS, Amazon. Hmm. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, great um, partnership coming in 2023. We're excited about 2023. Um, so that's what we're working on, um, big partnerships with Red Hat. So um, I think 2023 is going to be the year of um, partnership and reaching out to, to the bigger uh, outside world uh, of IT. That's the goal of the company. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you'd like to, um, you know, check us out, yellowtel.tech, anywhere. If you Google uh, yellowtel.tech, if you go on Instagram, it's yellowtel.tech. If you go on LinkedIn everywhere, it's yellowtel.tech. That's awesome. And we'll definitely share all of those, uh, that information in the show notes. And uh, thanks so much, Juby, for sharing your story. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back for a future episode. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.